Aye, aye, I'm Beefer. What are you doing here, you fat, blue-haired bastard? Your eyes are all funny, like jelly days. And and you, you like a fucking jockey bastard, like you, you like, I, I don't know, like. The fuck did you just call me? I said you're a blue-haired jockey bastard. What, blue bastard, blue-haired bastard. Ah, oh, fuck it. You, you're making me look stupid now. Don't like it at all. Oh, hey, how are you go, you wee shit? You're not even switched on. So you can't even tell me shit. See, I am switched on. I'm booting up and everything. Look at me seeking from that CD-ROM drive. I tell ya, I'm posting now and not letters. Although I love jolly old letters from Royal Mail, innit? Her Majesty the Queen, she comes out posting letters, innit? Or is it the postman? I can't remember anymore. Who gives a fuck? Oh, look at you now. You're behaving like a wee fanny, so you are. Oi, oi! Watch your mouth! Alright, I've had enough of you for one day. Power off time. Don't you switch me off like... Ugh. I'll bloody get you, I will. Tired now. I'll bloody get you! <sighs> Jens, sorry about that, guys. Ah, oh, heavens. Ah, oh, never had that happen to me before. Not by a computer, anyway. Um... Let's see if we can salvage what we can of this video and try and make it more civilised so well. Well, <coughs> hello everyone and welcome to this video, so I'm Frontier Video. My name is Jay Whitefield. And today what we have here is the mesh computer that I got with my free cycle bundle. And um, as you may have heard in that uh, <coughs> confrontation back there, um, mesh, mesh computers actually originate from London and um, yeah but um, I've posted I've uh, done some uh, testing out on this and uh, actually does seem quite a good system despite the fact that it's a football hooligan anyway um, <laughs> tell you what I'll do I'll uh, whip the side off so we can actually have a look at it a um, couple of things I need to do actually to this well I guess it's just one thing um, I need to do to this machine I uh, need to install I need to replace the CMOS battery and um, then we're going to actually go ahead and install Windows 98 second edition on here So that is the side panel removed from the system and um, so let's take a closer look at it. So what we have in this system then is a um, couple of things. Um, we have a modem some sort of connection. We have a D-Link D530, uh, DE, let's, let me try that again. Um, D-Link um, 530TX, can't even mind the full model number, but DFE 530TX, that's the one. Um, and that was the first Ethernet card I ever actually had in a computer. I installed it in the 2001 custom built in 2003 and it was the first ever expansion card I installed by myself. Um, so those actually do have some sentimental value. Um, we also have a Creative Labs Sound Blaster Live card, the um, 10k1 version and um, you know obviously that that makes it uh, the more basic of the Sound Blaster Live series uh, of cards, but they're still very good. 
there's also extra USB ports on the back and there is a an NVIDIA GeForce 2 MX400 graphics card in the system as well. There's also uh, DVD, ROM and CD writer drives in here and a floppy disk drive and one thing that wasn't in the system was um, when I first acquired it was this 120 gigabyte hard disk drive which I'm really glad it's there now because I kind of needed for it to have a hard disk so what I'm gonna do now is I will go off camera and I will install a new CMOS battery and then we'll come back and we will install Windows 98 second edition on this Okay, so the new CMOS battery has been fitted to the system. This will be the first time powering it on. <clears throat> but before we do that, let's just have a cup of tea. Fantastic. Now, smoke test! Now, because I've replaced the battery, it's actually said that um, it's forgotten the settings, so the defaults have been lo um, loaded up. Also, it does say that there is no exter uh, there is no second DVD ROM drive or CD drive. That is a lie. There is actually a second drive. It's just not necessarily the most detected thing in the world to the BIOS, but it is perfectly detected in Windows, well, in Windows. What we're going to do is we're going to go into setup and have a look at the options and see what we think of them. What I'm going to do, going to load setup defaults, and we're going to set the date and time. So the time is... 1615 <clears throat> and the date is June 23, 2015. There's a floppy drive A, which is a 1.44 meg 3.5 inch format, no floppy B. Keyboard features. Yeah, we don't need any of that. Don't need the supervisor or user password. Halt on all errors. Installed memory, 256 megabytes. This originally came with a gig and a quarter of memory, but I've actually taken the gig out because this system really doesn't need it. And it could be useful for me. <coughs> Clock. Frequency settings standard, DRAM frequency 100 megahertz. I think it's actually 133. Um, system performance setting optimal. Um, CPU V core setting auto. CPU level ca uh, 2 cache ECC check disabled. BIOS update enabled. PS2 mouse function control auto USB leggy le leggy support legacy support auto. Let's have a look at the chip config. I/O device. Don't have one of those, nor do we have one of those. <clears throat> if 
Shadow config, that seems fine. Power management, user defined. So I can actually have a look at the motherboard and the CPU temperature, 43 degrees C. Could probably stand to be cooler, but it'll be fine. Let's have a look at the uh, voltage. Yep. That looks okay to me. And then boot. ID hard drive none. What is this? Oh well. So there's already a version of Windows on here. I tried going for the version of Windows that had a product key stuck to the back of this system, Windows Millennium Edition. However, there are a couple of problems which I will show you. It seems that not many of the drivers seem to work, even though they were downloaded for the correct hardware. I've not bothered installing the display driver just yet though because I wanted to install everything else. <clears throat> and it's um it's taken its sweet old time loading. Which it really shouldn't shouldn't do. I mean it was loading fine the other day. We've seen the Windows ME boot screen. Oh well. Just that will just make it a lot easier for me to perform the next steps in this video. Let's go and install Windows 98. Num num num. Now another slight issue with the system. The reset button. You can't actually press it. So I actually literally have to power off the system and power it back on again. <clears throat> oh and just ignore where it says dimension 4600 there. That is usually the position on my KVM switch where the uh, Dell Dimension 4600 usually is plugged in. But um, I've just put that off to one side for a moment while you know I work on these machines. So as you can see, the um, ID hard drive is detected by the Promise ID controller. Right. So what we want to do now, we've, we're in the Windows 98 CD. We want to boot from the CD-ROM. So press two. Um, we want to, s or do we? Nah, do you know what? Hang on. Actually, no, we did want to start with ITCD ROM support. My mistake. There we go. So, next thing to do is go to, we need to format the hard drive. Now if we're doing it from the boot CD, what you actually have to do is browse to the D drive, or the E drive, 
you usually have to uh, try and find out <laughs> which drive is which if you have a dual drive system like I do. Now, with that all set up, let's go to CD Win 98. Format C colon slash Q for quick format. So format C colon means a C drive slash Q means quick format slash S. Let's copy some system files over. Make the hard disk bootable. I've named the hard disk mesh underscore PC. So now what we want to do is make An install um, a directory for the installation files to go in. Windows options tabs. Oops. <clears throat> and I've noticed that uh, some of you guys have started uh, doing this method in your videos as well. So um, thumbs up. Uh, Jay approved. Thank you very much for uh, taking note. Basically, what we're doing here is what um, <clears throat> is what Westminster really don't fancy: a Scottish person intervening in things from London. Well, kind of had to to make it work. <laughs> In this case, the thing from London is the computer. Right, now with the files copying, or the files newly copied, uh, the next step will be to remove the CD from the drive, put it back in its case, and control alt delete the computer restarted. Geez. Thank you. Reboot. <coughs> and then away we go. So the board that's in here is, um, I believe, an A7S. Fantastic. It's an Asus board. Right, now that we're booted to a Windows 98 command prompt, what we need to do is browse to the directory we copied the Windows 98 files to. So to do that, cd windows options cabs. Um, now UK keyboard users beware because the US, the UK keyboard layout will not be enabled in this mode. It will actually be the US keyboard layout. And that goes for anyone else with an international keyboard as well. Um, so just take note. Um, at least on the UK keyboards, the backslash key um, may become the hash key. Um, which is... Which is the middle row and right next to the enter key. Now, want to go to setup and the Windows 98 version of ScanDisk will run fine without a high memory system, uh, without a high memory uh, manager. <clears throat> now the drive that's in here is a 120 gig drive I had laying about. Um, wasn't sure if the drive worked. Um, had to make some jumpers for it though. So what we're going to do, we're just going to click continue. We don't want to install to Windows.000. 
The directory C colon backslash windows already exists. Yes! <clears throat> We'll do custom. Let's just enable everything, why don't we? Except online services. We don't need that. Nor do we need WinTV. So that's everything else enabled. Let's give it a name. Put it on the white group, white group. Set the uh, keyboard layout and system locale. And establish my location as the United Kingdom. Now, when Scotland become independent, Microsoft won't be releasing an update for Windows 98 because it's been out of support since 2006 to tell it that Scotland is now an independent country. So you'll still have to select United Kingdom. Or you could select Ireland, if you can. Anyway. <clears throat> so this is Windows 98 installing. Now if it's anything like Windows ME setup, it will go really, really quick. I'm gonna be honest here. That AMD Athlon processor is pure quick. One gigahertz. It's it really is fantastic. I mean, the Athlon processor is really kind of what puts AMD on the map. Set them out as another chip as an alternative to Intel, a proper alternative to Intel, rather than just another maker of Intel chips. You know, when they started making chips under their own names, you know, <clears throat> it took. I think it took them a good long while, you know, to get themselves properly established. But with the Athlon, you know, when that came out in uh, the late 90s, basically it blew everyone away. It was, you know, it, it was a good chip for the time, I must admit. Trouble is, a lot of of the slot A or socket A motherboards that were around at the time, they were cheap. <clears throat> so it doesn't matter how good AMG's, AMD's chips were, the boards would strangle them. Now, some of AMD's later chips maybe weren't as reliable. Certainly the Athlon XP series of chips like to get um, extremely hot. But, they, you know, AMD do make some good chips. And nowadays, <clears throat> you can actually buy good boards for AMD chips. While AS Rock may have given me lots and lots of problems um, with Intel chips, they can make a good AMD board. You know, um... I mean, they are good for that. Anyway, this is, um, I was going to say I'll, you know, let you all go, but uh, this is just about finished. So what's going to happen now is the system will boot up into Windows 98 for the first time. I remember the first time I ever installed Windows 98 from scratch <clears throat> but um, now that we've booted up into Windows 98 it's going to ask for my user information I'll accept the license agreement and I'll type in a product key and I will be right back So now we're at the last part of Windows 98 setup. <coughs> Whoops a daisy, I believe I may have incorrectly set the time. So, 
There we go. Um, June the 28th, 2015. Greenwich Mean Time. Apply. Okay. So now it's just a case of waiting for Windows 98 to do updating system settings. And then <clears throat> we'll go into Windows 98 proper and we'll actually install some drivers. So I will rejoin you once we're back at the Windows 98 desktop and I have a flash disk. Now, I've dropped a clanger. I've registered this to me. And it's not going to be my computer. Whoops a daisy. Now, what I will do is type user into the logon prompt. <clears throat> then, what we can do is actually go to the uh, registry editor and change who the system is registered to. Let's do that now. <clears throat> so go to Reg Edit. Type my name. <clears throat> And then we find it in uh, registered organization and registered owner. So we'll change the registered owner to user, registered organization to organization. And then what we need to do now is restart. We can just hold down shift while restarting so that It'll just restart Windows and not the whole computer. <clears throat> so now the computer is registered to user at organization. So <clears throat> next thing we need to do because I have all the drivers stored on my USB flash drive, is we need to install a driver for said device. And while we're doing that, we'll test out the bottom CD-ROM drive. Um, this is um, Legacy uh, Compact Evo N600 drivers. This is not a Compact Evo N600. But the uh, USB uh, mass storage driver for Windows 98 is on this desk, so we're going to use it. No argument, by the way. <clears throat> so as you can see, there's... Um, now a few utilities for older machines, some of which I'll install, like WinRAR. Definitely going to need that. And I'm also going to need NUSB 33E. So that's the USB mass storage device drivers installed. 
Um, so what I will do <coughs> is I'll restart the machine, install my flash drive, it's already plugged in at the back. Um, I plugged it in just before the end of setup, Windows 98 setup. So it'll probably need me to actually uh, go into device manager and s install the driver manually. So what I'll do is that. <coughs> right click on my computer, select device manager. Ew, did I install internet connection sharing? Gross. Right. USB disk 2.0, that's what my flash drive is called. And then we have a USB mass storage device. <coughs> and I'll just let these uh, drivers install. And there you have it. So, I'll be right back. <clears throat> okay, so I'm having problems once again with some of the drivers. <clears throat> so, let's install the ones that I do have. Like, for example, the Vi uh, VFR M1 drivers. Now, I remember, I remember these drivers. from my 2001 custom belt. Click to enable DMA mode. And you know, these drivers <coughs> basically just kind of help the system run as well as it can. You know, they're chipset drivers basically. Um, so I'll get those installed and then we'll see what's going on. Then we'll install the uh, Promise IDE drivers. So now it's installing <coughs> the via CPU to AGP controller and the host bridge, CPU to PCI bridge. There we go. Let's install something else. The promised, um, promise, promise me you'll like for me IDE controller. PCI mass storage device. For storing your mass. Windows 9 XME Promise Ultra 100 IDE controller. It's a very nice SCSI symbol there. Well done. Well guys, I'm sorry to say this is uh, being a resounding failure. To use a technical term, what has happened here is the operating system on installing the promise me you'll wait for me um, PCI mass storage device driver thingy for the IDE bus, which the hard disk is on. The operating system has proceeded to um, jobby all over itself. So, what I'm going to need to do, I am um, first off, I'm going to <clears throat> use ScanReg to restore the system. Well, to restore the system's registry, it's kind of like a, um, it's kind of like a very primitive forerunner to a uh, system restore. But um, still, I quite like it. So I'm going to type scanreg slash restore. I'm going to use this one. Going to use this backup of the registry and hopefully what that will do 
is that we'll uninstall the promise driver. Um, <clears throat> and there's something that I actually do need to look up. Because I've tried this system with Windows ME, doesn't like it. Tried it with Windows 98, and it still doesn't like it. So, I think I'm going to try it with Windows 2000. I'm wondering if I should copy these files to a floppy disk and install them at the start of Windows 2000 setup. I'm going to come down in favour of yes, that is exactly what I'm going to do. Now, I'm not sure that this will work. In fact, I've never done this in Windows 2000 setup or XP setup. However, I have done it in Windows 7 setup. And obviously, that means I'm knowledgeable on Windows NT's use of every single device driver ever known to man or beast. Now, what we'll do is we'll just erase this floppy disk. Covering all my bases here. And Windows 2000 has drivers for the network interface card, which is nice. So, with that in mind, geez, geez, a desk. Thanking you, thanking you. Time to reboot the system before it auto plays Windows 2000. The Windows 2000 CD and offers to upgrade me. So I'll just pull this floppy out just for the time being. Press any key to boot from CD. Now, I believe I pressed F6, but I'm not entirely sure. I like that, the PCI bus driver. <laughs> PCI IDE bus driver. There's a lot of bus drivers on this CD. Hopefully one of them might be able to get the buses to actually run on time! Hello, is that the number one to Garth D? Would you mind coming a wee bit earlier, please? Only I'm late for class every day. Probably because I don't study in Garth D. Anyway, um... <laughs> setup could not determine the type of one or more mass storage uh, devices installed in your system or you've chosen to manually specify an adapter. Currently, setup will load support for the following mass storage devices. Noun! To specify additional SCSI adapter, CD-ROM drives, or special disk controllers for use with Windows 2000. Oh, look... Oh look guys, we've got a special snowflake! <laughs> um, in including those with, for which you have a device support disk for a mass storage device manufacturer, press S. If you do not have any device support disks from a mass storage device manufacturer, or do not wish to, or do not want rather, to specify additional mass storage 
device is for use with Windows 2000, press enter. I'm going to press S. I've got the support disk in drive A. Oh, dang it! Oh well. Let's just press enter. Let's just pretend none of this ever happened, okay? So what we're going to do now is we're going to go into the uh, recovery console, make a new partition, and um, yeah, <laughs> format it as NTFS. That would be nice. Set up a starting Windows 2000. So I want to repair an installation. Did not find any hard disk drivers installed on this computer. Quit set up, please press F3, Pilgrims. Thanks. I kind of knew this was going to happen. Oh well, I've not formatted yet, so maybe I can cheat a wee bit. Blimmin' promise IDE controller's not that promising, really, when you think about it. Oh, sugar. Oh, uh, ah. Oh. Fine. This is called cheating. And I bet I've named it wrong. Excellent. I've chosen to manually specify my computer type. Standard PC, I think. That's not what I wanted to do, but it's good to know that um, I can do so. What's this business about a 486 processor as well? So let's specify Ah this one in a completely different file Windows 2000 is not going to play football.
<clears throat> yeah, no hard disk controllers. Right. Well, <clears throat> I guess this will conclude this video. Um, I will go now. And I will try and find a way to get this useless piece of London-based COD's wallop going. Seriously. Yeah. This is why we don't need London's influences in Scotland, because then it makes Windows 2000 not work. And what's even worse, it makes Windows 98 not work. And that, to me... It's a crime that would need to be tried um, in The Hague or the World Court or something, the United Nations, New York, Manhattan, Burger from Frankie and Benny's, with the Italian heritage, which is brilliant, from Brooklyn, New York. How they made a Manhattan Burger in Brooklyn, I will never know, uh, but they somehow did. Um... So yeah, <clears throat> you see, this machine has got me so annoyed now that I'm talking absolute tripe. Seriously. Now, what I want to know is which, which slovenly southerner built this? <sighs> now nah, I'm kidding on. Anyway, uh, before I alienate a lot of my audience, Sorry about that, I don't mean anything personally, it's just that this machine has decided to be tripe. But, if it, um, if it fails to work, you know, even after I try all sorts of other things with it, um, then I'm just obviously going to gut it and build a new system in it. Simples. Anyway, with that all said, I hope you've all enjoyed watching this video. If you have, please feel free to subscribe to my channel. And, um, I hope you'll all join me for my next video. Cheerio, bye.